Hello and welcome to Encore, the arts and culture show here on France and Cat on today's programme. Many consider him one of the most visionary and influential directors of the past half century. In a career spanning over 70 years and several disciplines, from theatre, film and opera, he's continually pushed the limits. His work is acclaimed worldwide, not only for its magnitude and stylistic range, also because of his continuous urge for innovation. British by birth, Parisian by adoption, he spent a lifetime exploring both physically and artistically. Two-time Tony Award-winning director Peter Brook is here on set with me to talk about his incredible career. So let's go meet him. Hello, Peter. Absolute honour to have you with us here today. Thanks for coming in to join us. Well, you've already found the real conversation stopping words after all the nice things you've just said I can't say a word <laughs> I've summed it all up I'm yes. sure there's plenty more to say about your career because it spans s over 70 years uh, your latest production is called the Valley of Astonishment yeah. which has just debuted here in Paris and I was lucky enough to go along to the premiere I have, if I was to sum it up I have to say it's an exploration of the human mind and its complexities and diseases uh, it explores a condition called synthesia, which is where mm. uh, people get confused, their, their senses get mixed up. Uh, as I was watching, I really felt like I was inside one of the characters' minds and delving into the way that they see the world and what a wonderful way of seeing the world. Um, I imagine a lot of research went into making this production. Oh, enormous. Many, many years, because after we'd done the Mahabharata, which really as the Indians say, contains everything in human and cosmic existence, everything is there. I thought, there must be something directly applicable to our lives today mm -hmm. that doesn't come through a myth. And I thought the only thing that really every minute of our lives is influenced by is science. And started studying science to see what could be turned into legitimate theater and found that nothing was legitimate for the theatre medium until suddenly I discovered that neurology is entirely based on the fine neurologist with great sympathy and very finely developed observation watching the detail of behaviour of human beings and the outer behaviour before even the PET scans became as popular as they are today. Yeah. The behavior was the expression of something unseen in that mysterious unknown area. And I'm delighted you use the word explore. Mm -hmm. We know nothing about it. Whatever is discovered, whatever science can begin mm -hmm. to reveal, it's always the beginnings of an exploration of something which we can only approach it's a whole, as it opens up a whole world. Yeah. And yeah, astonishment, as you say, which I yeah. suppose is where the, the, the name comes from. Let's take a look at part of the play now. This is one of the central characters, Sammy Costa, explaining her extraordinary memory to neuro neurologists. I cover my eyes with my hands because of all the discussions in the corridors, the various noises, the strange voice of Dr. M. Very orange, but nice, makes blurs and I need to concentrate. Normally doctors, uh, he would take the task, that is my lower me, but this time it would be much too dangerous to see. He would take it up with printed letters and columns, and with these syllables that would never work, so I take the matter in hand with my first me, the intellectual one. Your previous play, The Man Who, also delved into to the workings of the human mind. Hmm. What is it about this subject matter that interests you? The fact that there is one thing that every one of us, every human being, whatever his race, his colour, his shape, his background has in common, we all have a head, and in on the head, something called a brain, and beyond the brain, something that encompasses all the functioning and our behaviour and our beliefs and our ideas and our words, we call it the mind, mm -hmm. because one can't grasp hold and put a picture on what the mind is. Brain, yes. Mind is something more. 
Let's let's talk about your your style now. As oh I know that God. you don't, I know you don't really like that word. Oh as we saw we saw in the uh, excerpt of the play, there uh, your your sets are often uh, very minimalistic, yes. uh, stripped bare, not many props on stage. After making a name for yourself as a master of eye popping spectacle, <laughs> you you suddenly went back to this very simplistic, minimalist type type look. No, not suddenly. Not suddenly. No, it was a very simple process of plunging at the theatre and having the wonderful excitement as a young person mm. of all the aspects of theatre and trying to plunge into them and then gradually discovering just year after year through work that the most astonishing, astonishing phenomenon in the theatre was something that we call the actor and the actress, the human being. Mm -hmm. The moment I could begin then to do another sort of work where more and more the emphasis was on what can come out of human beings in a comic, dramatic, acting relationship with one another that took us to all our adventures around the world in Africa, mm -hmm. improvising, because one saw that we can be like, in all these countries, the storyteller, you need nothing more than the storyteller and the people around him and the simplest of means we saw in India. The whole of the Mahabharata told day after day to a spellbound mm. audience and the storyteller had just one thing, he had a stick and that stick could become a sea, it could become an army advancing, it could become one person standing mm -hmm. alone and so gradually, I didn't fall in love with simplicity. I didn't say to myself, no, like somebody going into a monastery and saying I'm going to make a, a vow. It was a gradual process. It was a natural process of saying, this is no longer necessary. This isn't an in rehearsal. We start with too much, mm -hmm. and then as the days go by, one says, yes, but even in the writing, that sentence is fine, but mm -hmm. A few less words would make it better. Simple you, as that. You really leave it up. That's the way I've written all my books. It's true. I write at great speed, pouring out everything that I've got, mm -hmm. and then have it in front of me and go over it again and again. And it's always mm -hmm. the same thing. You, you yeah, really leave it up to necessary. the audience to interpret, don't you? Yeah. And, and talking about the way that you work with your actors, your son, who's also a director, yes. m made a, a documentary yes. uh, behind the scenes of, of you working uh, with a theatre group so called The Tightrope. Yes. Can you, I mean, it's a very and rare glimpse the into, into the way you, that you're into basic. your process. What would you describe your directing style as? Possible, impossible at the same time. Watching and listening. And no, I think as simple. I try to be what you expect if you go on a boat. You expect that there is a helmsman, somebody who in the night has at some point seen far, far through the clouds of the lighthouse and the light's gone, mm -hmm. but he has to keep a sense of that, knowing, and this is exactly what the tightrope has to do, knowing that you have to bend a bit one mm -hmm. way, bend the other. If you bend too much, you're lost. But what keeps you straight is, as you go forward in this direction, and not tilting too much this way or that, is you have a sense of where you're going, even if the light has vanished. Okay. And that's the director's job. Okay. Let's go back to, to your early work. You started mm -hmm. off really, uh, well, your career was started off in Britain and you earned a name for a reinvigorating Shakespeare. It's actually the 450th anniversary of Shakespeare's birth this year and you've just released a book yes. about him. Do you yes. think that he, he's, he, there's still ways of, of making Shakespeare relevant and reinvigorating his work? Oh, that's the only reason. If you start from the conviction but there's only one Shakespeare, and he is the peak of all writing, and for some reason that we can't analyze, he's unique. And therefore you can find everything, every level, from the lowest and crudest to the most sublime, somewhere reflected in plays which he undoubtedly wrote mm -hmm. at great speed. And writing at great speed means that he carried all this all the time in him. And 
because of that, the only way to approach it is not to look for how can we do it today to make it modern, that's idiotic. Mm -hmm. No feeling for the greatness of the work. But to say we must do it in his period, that's equally idiotic. Yes. The only thing is, the only reason to do this is that it speaks to us. Mm -hmm. So that means searching and searching until the actors and everyone concerned, designers, musicians, feel what it is that speaks to us. Uh -huh. And in that way, you can be more modern in clothes, less okay. modern. It's unimportant. It has to be real now. Okay, just I really want to ask you just quickly because we're running out of time. Oh, you, really? you started off in Britain, but you've lived in France here for decades. Why did why did you decide to to move here and forge the rest of your career here? Because at the time, it's changed now, thank God. England was so insular that what I deeply wanted to do, develop our work, was for it to be international, have people of different races, different backgrounds coming and work together. And I found that. Paris and France had a tradition in mm -hmm. the arts for that. You look at the painting, the musicians, the dancers, who've all come at a certain time to a central point, which is Paris, okay. over a century, and felt that this was the place to establish our international center. Okay. That's how it happened. Fascinating. Simple answer. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us today. We could speak for hours and hours about your wonderful career. Thank well, you. fortunately, we've run out of time. Yeah. Uh, thank you also for tuning in. Don't forget you can catch the Valley of Astonishment at the Théâtre du Bouffe du Nord until the end of May. We're going to end the show now with some images of one of Peter Brook's best-known productions, an adaptation of Mozart's The Magic Flute. See you for more culture soon. <laughs>